Since 2002, we've been giving much-needed attention to the Catholic Church sex scandal. It's sad that 17 years later, there are still those inside and outside the church who still insist we downplay or even deny the facts and reality that thousands of children were raped by priests. Fortunately, my first guest today ignored those voices and insisted that the truth be told. It's a truth that's painful and dark, yet it's a truth that many need to learn from, especially since he is the first abuse victim of a man who later became a priest in New Jersey and was among those who were protected by the Catholic Church. We're joined by Michael Martone. How are you saying, Michael? I'm good. How are you? Well, I appreciate your, your strong voice in this issue. As I said, since my first chance to talk with the Boston Globe reporters back in 2002, this has been a, one of the topics I've tried to focus on as much as is worthy and certainly possible. Certainly, mm-hmm. certainly your voice has been uh, something extraordinary, too, because of the the results it's produced. L- let me let's just go back to your story, because your story involves an individual by the name of Kevin Gugliotti. Who was he when you knew him? What did he become in spite of his actions? Um, I, I knew Kevin as for as long as I could remember. He was a, a close friend uh, to my family. He was someone from our neighborhood. Um, I, I joined the Boy Scouts in, uh, when I was 11, um, and Kevin was already a fixture in, uh, in my life, almost like a family member at that point. And he was a scout leader. Um, you know, he did many good things for me as, as my scout leader. Um, and, uh, um, you know, one thing in particular that comes to mind, like we, like as a young scout, we always dreamed of going to Philmont. And when I was 15, we did go to Philmont and that, that's kind of like a dream come true that Kevin made happen. This is one example of, you know, the, the kind of things he did for me. And, uh, you know, the, the abuse happened, like, after that time. So um, the grooming was, like, well-established before the grooming, uh, before the abuse started, I should say. Um, so, uh, but he was, you know, remained a close friend to my family uh, for quite some time, even after I started distancing myself Personally, from him, uh, still not seeing things clearly, he was still around my family and uh, um, a seemingly close family friend. And with, with what Kevin did, I mean, this this was a time, obviously, before we knew the, the magnitude of really anything that had been happening and how the Catholic Church had been protecting these, these rapist priests. And right. I use that word with a purpose because by saying abusive or pedophile, to me, that seems like it's... It's lessening uh, the the damage that these indiv- individuals did. They're they're rapists, pure, pure and simple. And what, wh- how old were you when the when the when the uh, when the actions that Gugliotti perpetrated took place? Around sixteen. So when, when you're sixteen, how do, how do you say to someone, "Well, here is by impression, superficial image, at least that." appears to be the the all american individual that mm-hmm. this is uh this is the the devil walking in in the mortal world now how, how do you you know at, at that point in time knowing you know the the lack of awareness of what was going on uh, in in far far vast numbers that we even are willing to admit to right now right how do, how do you say to someone well this is someone who's abusing me and and um, and, and think that you're going to be believed first of all Right. And, you know, the, the, the abuse with me was like subtle and a lot of it was happening when I was sleeping and uh, at first. And uh, so, you know, it, it was very subtle and confusing and a lot of disbelief. And that that this person who who I, I at that point, I was I thought of him as a friend uh, and trusted him a lot that that it just, just didn't make sense to me. And, and I, I didn't know how to make sense of it. Um, so I don't think I was thinking in the terms that you're speaking of. Um, I, 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 it, it, it's such a complicated thing when you're groomed. Uh, it's not like a straightforward, this person's doing this to me and I need to tell someone right away. Um, it, it, because of how long he groomed me and my family and my community, it really, um, makes things very fuzzy for a victim. Um. And, you know, at different points in time, I was making sense of it in different ways. 
So the more distance in space I created, the more I saw things clearly for what they were and that it was manipulation and abuse and, and betrayal. Um, and that, uh, you know, eventually I realized others were at risk. Um, and obviously with this new victim coming forward, his, his propensity for abuse was much greater than I could, could even see at the time. Um, yeah, that's, that's the thing with the, with the Google Daddy too, because he was, he had yet to become a priest mm-hmm. when he perpetrated what he did with you. Right. But then the church, once it was revealed what Guglielmi had done with this, and you know we don't know how many other victims as well. Well, with your case, that doesn't count because it wasn't he wasn't a priest yet. I mean, how does that make you feel? Because that's basically what the church said. Yeah, I'm. I mean, uh, at the time in 2003, I shared my story with them. Um, I mean, I gave a very detailed written account. Um, and uh, and he met with them in person, went over that account, answered any questions. And a few months later, they just sent me a letter saying they didn't find anything to substantiate my claims. And I, I, I really didn't know how to react to that, but I, I, I just felt like I did what I could do, and I wanted to move forward. And obviously, that wasn't enough to stop him. But, uh, you know, in hindsight, I'm pretty disgusted. Uh, I didn't track where he was in his career or anything like that, but to find out years later that they not only assigned him less than three miles from my house, they assigned him to work with children, so they did, you know, they did nothing with the information I gave them. It's just, it's just mind-boggling. Um, and certainly when I see them put his name on a list and put in parentheses child pornography, not even acknowledging my claim still, it, it, it's, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, hurtful. We're talking with uh, Michael Martone, who... Is uh, has come out before as a victim of a pedophile priest, Kevin Gugliotti, and has now attached his name to the actions to hopefully give... Well, did you want to give... Knowing where you had been and where you are now, can you imagine that there are other voices out there who are sitting in silence out of fear, and you hope that you, by going from Mr. X to Michael Martone, that you can be a catalyst for other voices to come forward? Um, yes. I mean, uh, someone coming forward to, like, the Union County prosecutors or any local prosecutor where, where the abuse occurred or even calling uh, the Attorney General hotline, um, it, do- it doesn't mean that you're going public. It just means that you're sharing your story with the authorities and you're willing to do what you need to do. And those authorities would protect your... your um, your anonymity and your identity, um, and still be able to bring them to justice. Um, and, um, you know, I'm getting a lot of support. Like, I've been sharing my story uh, after it was published in the Star Ledger and on NJ.com. I've been sharing my story on Facebook and then started sharing it publicly on Facebook. I've gotten tons of support, and, uh, you know, the vast majority of people do believe my story. So, I mean, if, if someone came forward, they are going to be believed. Um, and, and the thing to keep in mind is in, in 1996, they changed the criminal statutes of limitations. Um, uh, 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 it's, it's much longer for, for a lot of offenses, and there, there actually is no statute of limitations for the more uh, heinous uh, offenses uh, of child sex abuse. So uh, in 1996, they changed the statute of limitations, but they didn't make it retroactive, so it didn't apply to me. Um, but anyone that he's abused since 1996 is in a much more powerful position than I am to hold him uh, criminally um, accountable. Certainly thanks um, to the work of Senator Vitale, who for, for decades has been trying to get the statute of limitation laws shifted around for more fairness to benefit the victims as opposed to protect the perpetrators, and that has right. finally come to pass, thankfully. Right, right. Yeah, that, that you're speaking. I was speaking of the criminal statutes limitations. You're not speaking of the civil statutes limitations, um, which people before 96, they, they can't make the criminal retroactive. So the civil that, uh, statute of limitations that's opening, opening up, people like me, that, that's their only means of seeking justice in these cases. And, and what's important about these civil cases is, um, as opposed to the victim compensation fund the, that the Archdiocese uh, of Newark is offering, um, the compensation fund is simply that, a compensation fund. You give your allegation 
um, these two individual, uh, you know, independent uh, people decide whether it's credible or not. They, um, if, if it's credible, they offer you a reward, and, and, you know, if you accept the reward, they give you the reward. And, but that's simply monetary, uh, which is fine for some, some victims. But that doesn't uh, give us the information we need. That doesn't give us Kevin's file. That doesn't tell us why Myers made, Archbishop Myers made such poor decisions and in, in, in not taking action on my um, allegations. Um, and it, it doesn't really uncover anything. If you bring a civil suit, um, you have discovery, which would, you know, demand such documents and demand that, you know, leaders of the church be deposed under oath. Um, so if if we want to know who knew what and when and how something so so heinous can happen in terms of a cover up, um, r- really civil action is is the only way to go. Um, we're, we're not you know, victims are not going to get that by just accessing the compensation fund. I um, mean you know I I greatly appreciate all you know the persistence of Senator Vitale and all the support he got. I mean, it was overwhelming, um, the, um, the passing of the bill through the Senate, 32 to, I think it was 32 to 1, and the Assembly was 70 to 0. Yes, it was. With five abstaining. So that's a clear message from our legislators in New Jersey that, that, that the Catholic Church just does not have the power that it had, because they've been, they've been at this for 20 years, and time and time again, the Catholic Church had enough influence to, to, to stall such a bill. I want to give you the phone number for the New Jersey Attorney General's hotline for um, free sexual abuse that that Michael referred to. It's 855-363-6548, 855-363-6548. I remember asking a domestic abuse victim once, after what happened to you, how can you love someone again? Well, after what happens to what happened to Michael and countless others, yeah. You can go over to our website on the download page. I had the, the Pennsylvania Grand Jury Report, and you can see the number of victims page after page after page. Same in New Jersey, although it was a little more general, but you still mm-hmm. see multiple victim, multiple victim over and over and over again. Imagine, mm-hmm. imagine for you listening, if you lost the element of trust in your life, what kind of life would you have? Well, not, certainly not a happy one, mm-hmm. but the only way for recovery is through facts and truth, and that's part of what Michael is doing, what other voices are doing, what organizations like SNAP are doing, and fortunately what the New Jersey General Attorney General's Office is doing. So the uh, the hotline number and the the various outlets are available to make things right. And they're important and they're valuable. Again, 855-363-6548. That's the Attorney General's hotline. If you have a story to tell as detailed or it, partially detailed as you possibly can just to add to the conversation to the discovery and to the arrival of truth and facts that's the starting point and the outlet and your voice and you are not alone you will be believed you will be trusted if there is a naysayer out there fortunately i think we can say at this point in time michael nowadays the the, the naysayers of the minority it wasn't always the case in 2002 2003 mm-hmm. and there were a lot of defenders that someone like you would if you came forward you would be attacked, and the church would have been protected. But that fortunately has changed now. Yes, that's the sense I'm getting. My you know, and I, the big thing for victims to realize is they did nothing wrong. I mean, we did nothing wrong. I, it, it's all on our, our perpetrators. So in my case, you know, me and any other victims of Kevin, we didn't do anything wrong. Kevin did something wrong, and it's not our secret. You know, if, if you have any anger at yourself, it's really you're not mad at. You know, you're mad that you're keeping his secret. You may not realize that, but it's not our secret. It's Kevin's secret. It's Archbishop Meyer's secret. And, um, you know, it's, you know, why keep it? Just throw it out there, whether it's public or just through the authorities um, or, or civil act action. Just throw it out there. It's not our secret. It's theirs. Well, yours is a strong voice. We've linked over to Michael's article, too, from NJ.com for you to read. Hopefully, if you are a victim who has been sitting in silence, suffering in silence, it will be one of those springboards that will motivate you to step forward into the light because you don't deserve the darkness that the, the actions of others have imprisoned you in. Michael, th- thank you so much for raising your voice all through this time and now even going further by adding your, your name to the story because that is a, a huge game changer for so many people out there who are going to find courage and and drive mm-hmm. your determination in that. And thank you for being here today. Thank you. I really appreciate your time.